Hello, my name is Christina. Nice to meet you all unofficially and I hope you enjoy my videos and I would like to share my fertility journey with you. A little bit about myself. My name is Christina, like I said, um, and my husband and I are both from Southern California. Uh, his name is Josue, and we have been married for a little bit over two years. Now, if it were up to him, we would have tried for a honeymoon baby, but I didn't want to do that. I was very nervous, and I just wanted to give us some time to be married and to have, you know, the time on our own to get to know each other and enjoy married life, just the two of us. We started trying to conceive in February of 2013 and we got pregnant only a few months after that so it didn't take very long. I was ecstatic. I couldn't believe it. I took the test on my own and I found a cute way to tell my husband. Um, it was actually close to Father's Day. It was in June and I went and bought him a Father's Day card and I basically wrote in the card that we were having a baby. And at first he didn't know what the heck that meant. He didn't get it at first. And then when he finally put two and two together, he was excited. And um, I asked him if it would be okay if I announced it to everybody. And he was kind of reluctant, but he didn't really care. He said it was up to me. So I did. I posted it on Facebook. I, I did try to let most of our family and close friends know before I did that. But I was just so excited. I wanted to get it out there. So I did put it on Facebook and Instagram. and. It was so overwhelming the amount of um, positive feedback we got, how many people were excited for us, and it was just the best thing ever. My dreams were finally coming true. I always wanted to be a mom, and once I got over that initial fear of like, holy crap, now it's time to actually start a family, um, it was a very exciting time for us. So what I did is I made an appointment with my doctor, and I had them confirm the pregnancy so that was confirmed and then we scheduled an ultrasound for when I was about 10 or 11 weeks and I believe the the ultrasound was done at 11 weeks. Throughout the pregnancy before that um, I was really nauseous. Uh, it was pretty bad. I felt like I couldn't do anything because I just needed to be stuffing my face with crackers all day and saltine crackers are my best friend. Um, but I was really sick. Um, I was craving eggs. I could not eat chicken for at least a couple of weeks. It just grossed me out. Um, so, you know, feeling sick, I thought, hey, you know, I, I really am pregnant. This is real. But we went for our first ultrasound, and um, the ultrasound technician who was doing the ultrasound, she um, started doing the ultrasound, and then she was just quiet for a long time, and I was like, oh, I already know. It's, you know, when someone's quiet and doing something like that, you kind of prepare for the worst so she pretty much just said uh, I know this is not what you want to hear but this looks like a pregnancy that has ended and I was like okay what does that even mean a pregnancy that has ended I mean in my mind I knew what it meant but that's a weird way to put it at least to someone who you know was getting ver their very first ultrasound for their very first pregnancy um, and so she basically told me it was something called blighted ovum and it meant that there was a sac but there was no baby or no fetal pole inside. And for me, that was very traumatizing. Um, I felt like I couldn't let my emotions out while she was there, um, and she was looking around for a long time. She said that while she was doing the ultrasound, she would check my um, uterus and ovaries for anything that might look funny. She did tell me I had a couple cysts, which no big deal. I know my mom and my sister get them. And basically I couldn't let myself cry or let anything out until she left. 
and she told me I couldn't leave until she got a hold of my doctor, which felt like forever. And we were there for quite a long time. Um, but it was confirmed. I mean, there was no baby inside. Uh, I had no symptoms as far as anything seeming wrong. I didn't have any bleeding, spotting. I didn't have any cramping. Um, so it was a real shock. I thought everything was fine. Um, but it wasn't. So I ended up having a DNC done. I had that done on August 8th of 2013. And I had to announce it to everyone that I had miscarried since I announced it on Facebook. Uh, and at first I was embarrassed. I didn't want to have to do that. I didn't want to have to deal with everybody saying, oh, I'm so sorry. But um, it actually ended up being a really good thing. Um, I really, benefited from everybody's support and condolences and it just made me feel like I wasn't alone um, as much as I felt like I was and that I hated the world um, but it was kind of nice it really was I'm, and I'm glad that it happened that way um, so after that my doctor said that we just needed to wait one cycle and we could tr start trying again so I was like, okay, I really do want a baby. So we started trying again after I had a cycle. And we got pregnant again um, in November. I actually found out right around Thanksgiving. So we were visiting our family in California. Um, but I didn't tell anybody except for Josue. I figured that it probably wasn't um, the best idea to announce it this time. Um, so I didn't. I didn't announce it to anyone. I just told Josue. I told a couple close friends, uh, my sister of course, um, and I did tell my mom. So at that point, um, since I had had a previous miscarriage, my doctor set me up to have an ultrasound sooner. Um, from the time I found out I was pregnant, they actually did blood work. They um, tested my HCG level a couple times to make sure it was increasing. He tested my progesterone uh, and he said it was good. Um, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and so I thought that everything was fine. And we went in for that very first ultrasound and when she was doing the ultrasound this time, I could see a little peanut, a little fetal pole inside the sac. Um, but when she went to find the heartbeat, there was no heartbeat. Um, and a little part of me wanted to believe that it was too early, um, that it was just that the baby hadn't had a chance to get that far yet, um, but she told me it most likely was another miscarriage. So, of course, I was very upset, and I felt like it can't be happening again because there was no reason for my first miscarriage. At least they told me, you know, it was just bad luck. Um, you know, I didn't have any health problems, didn't have any symptoms as far as, you know, miscarriage or anything. Um, and so I was like, really? I'm having, you know, this bad luck. I had one miscarriage that was a blighted ovum, and then I'm having a second miscarriage, and, um, you know, there was a baby in there, but just no heartbeat. So I was like, oh, this is not, this is not my life. I didn't want to believe it. Um, so I did tell everybody that I had told I was pregnant that I did have another miscarriage, and they couldn't believe it. They thought it was just... Um, ridiculous basically and, and it is but um, things happen for a reason even though we might not know what reasons they are um, you just, just sometimes have to accept it um, so after the second one I, I had a DNC is again I had another uh, DNC surgery um, and I healed very quickly from those uh, I read stories of people who bleed for a long time after or they're in a lot of pain and and my surgeries went fine. I didn't really have very much bleeding. I didn't really have very much pain. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, and same thing, he told me, just wait one cycle and we can try again. Uh, at that point, I asked him if there were any tests that could be run to find out if there was anything wrong with me. Um, and, and he did, he ran a lot of tests. Um, I felt like I probably gave 50 vials of blood. Um, and everything came back fine. So, you know, I felt a little bit better about that. Um, but as time went on, um, I just felt more and more like I should see a fertility specialist. Um, so our appointment with the fertility specialist was actually just a few weeks ago. Um, and at that appointment, I was actually already pregnant. 
Um, I am pregnant right now with my third pregnancy and I'm praying that everything goes fine um, because I want to be able to give hope to those people who have experienced the same thing I've experienced. Um, but anyway, at the fertility appointment, I gave him a whole stack of my medical history, all the tests that had been run. Um, I told him what my experiences had been the last few months with ovulation predictor kits. Um, he told me that um, it did, didn't sound like I was ovulating very easily, and I wasn't too concerned about that just because I had gotten pregnant two times before, and I just felt like, you know, that's not really the main problem. I just want to find out why I'm not able to keep the pregnancies. Uh, and he told me that when my doctor checked my progesterone, it was in the normal range, but that it really should have been higher for a pregnant person. So hearing that really made me sad, and I just didn't, I didn't know if they had put me on progesterone at that time, if the baby could have been saved, um, or you know what the case would have been. Uh, it took me a while to get over feeling like that, but. Um, the fertility specialist definitely gave me a lot of hope that things would be fine. Uh, he said that he was going to test me for a lot more things. He said my doctor tested me for about half of the things that he would have tested for. And so we did that extra blood work. He said that he wanted to do an ultrasound to see if I had already ovulated. Um, and at this time I didn't know that I was pregnant. Didn't know I was pregnant at the fertility specialist visit or else I might not have gone. Um, or it would have been a completely different circumstance. I would have just had them make sure everything's fine, um, see what tests they could run. Um, but anyway, he said he was going to do an ultrasound and see if I had ovulated already. Um, because he wanted to do something called a water ultrasound or a saline ultrasound. Um, basically where they fill your uterus with a saline solution or water, whatever the case is. Um, and when it's expanded, they can actually see better if there's anything structurally wrong to see if I have a hostile u uterus, like if anybody watches Grey's Anatomy, um, Meredith has a hostile uterus. So um, that was one of the things that they could do and see if there was anything structurally wrong. But he said I had ovulated already and so I'd have to wait until the next month. So I was like, okay, you know, that's fine. Um, but he recommended to call on the first day of my cycle so that we could start Clomid, which is a medication that helps you to ovulate. Um, and like I said, I wasn't too worried about ovulating, but at this point I wanted a baby so bad that I figured it couldn't hurt. Um, so he wanted me to call on the first day of my cycle so that we can get started with Clomid, um, an HCG injection or a trigger shot and progesterone just as a precaution. Uh, I asked him if too much progesterone was bad and he said no, so that made me feel a lot better. Um, so I ordered those um, from the pharmacy um, and then, you know, I was basically just waiting to get my period. And I obviously was freaking out when you're trying to conceive a baby, you kind of have an obsession with testing all the time, with paying attention and reading into symptoms too much. And my period had been four days late the last time, and so I was thinking, okay, my cycle's not really regular, um, and it hasn't been since my last DNC, so I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know when I sh should or would get my period again. Um, so I was testing, you know, taking a pregnancy test just in case. I tested probably every day for a while, and they were negative, so I was like, okay, there's no way that I am. So when it got to um, kind of the last day, even if my period would have been, you know, four days late, um, and I still hadn't gotten it. So that day after work, I took another test, um, and it looked negative at first. I didn't really want to think anything else of it. I was like, okay, whatever, just one line. Um, and then I went and, and ran some errands, and I came back, and a couple of hours later, um, there was another very faint line. And I was like, okay, maybe it's an EVAP line. Um, you know, I'm not going to get my hopes up about this just because, you know, you're not supposed to read tests after that long. So I figured, okay, you know, I'm not going to read too much into it. But I just started getting anxious and I wanted to know for sure. So I went that night to buy an early result pregnancy test and I was going to test in the morning. So I took everything in me not to take the tests right then and there that night, 
Um, but I know in the morning the tests are a little bit better just because um, your urine is more concentrated. Um, and so I took the test that morning and I had told Josue the case. I told him, I was like, hey, I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to get an early result pregnancy test because I'm kind of freaking out. I just want to feel better. If I take it in the morning and everything, you know, if it's negative, then I won't have to be thinking about it anymore. And so he's like, okay. So I wake up in the morning and it's really early. It's about 6 a.m. because um, I have to be at work at 7.30. And I took the test and I'm in the bathroom and I take it and it's positive. And I almost start hyperventilating and my first feeling is terror. Um, I'm terrified just because it's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be pregnant. But then I started thinking, you know, what if I miscarry again? And, you know, what if um, something happens? Am I prepared for that? I just, I started freaking out. And so I come in the room and I wake Josue up and I tell him I can't breathe and he's just like what's wrong and I was like I took the test and he's like oh so are you just waiting for the result and I'm like no it's positive positive." and he's like what really and I'm like yes it is and he's like well that's good right you should be happy and I'm like I am happy but I'm so scared so that's kind of where we are right now um, it has been a crazy few days just because um, I I wanted to announce it again um, I wanted to tell everybody that we were pregnant just because I was racking my brain and I was just driving myself nuts with all these negative feelings. What if something happens again? And what if this? What if that? Um, and I knew that people would be excited. I knew that people would allow me to be positive um, and pass on their good vibes to me. Um, and so I finally told Josue that I wanted to post it. And so I did. I did post it on Instagram and on Facebook again. Um, and it helped so much. It just everybody was so excited everybody just you know said that they would pray for us and and that meant so much and it just made me feel a lot better and it took away a lot of those negative feelings I'm still scared to death um, but you know the fact that everybody else is excited lets me be more excited as well it, it doesn't it doesn't keep those negative feelings there because everybody's so excited and pulling for me and, and it just made me feel so much better um, so that day I went to get blood work done uh, for them to confirm the pregnancy and find out what my HCG level is. So they confirmed it positive for pregnancy and they told me my HCG was at 57, 58, something around there. Um, and that they would do repeat blood work um, next week, which is in a few days um, on Wednesday. And I... And looking forward to that even though I'm very scared um, because I don't want it to be bad I still need to get those results so um, we're going on Wednesday for me to do that repeat blood work and then my doctor said that we would probably do the first ultrasound um, at seven weeks um, and so that's only I should be about five weeks um, tomorrow so it should just be about two weeks away that I should be able to get my first ultrasound um, and that's where we are um, I'm super excited and I can't wait to get good news and if it is bad news then um, you know I'll deal with it but I'm really hoping it's good news because I've waited for this for so long um, and I'm gonna be 26 um, this year which is not old so please do not hold that against me that I think that you know anything older than that is really old I just always thought I would be a young mom and that's what I hoped for my entire life I waited until I was married to make sure everything was good the time was right and now it is and I'm just hoping that my dream is finally coming true and that I don't have to endure a third loss um, that being said um, here is my positive test it's so exciting to see that um, and if it hadn't been positive, this would have been my life. Clomid, HCG injection, these are the needles, a shark's container. When I got the call from the pharmacy, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so overwhelming. So I definitely, um, yeah, I definitely have compassion for those that are going through all of that or who, you know, may have it worse. I know I've had two miscarriages, but I've never had to deal with this whole fertility treatment thing and it's kind of scary um, but for right now um, I am on these wonderful things which are progesterone suppositories 
not really the funnest thing, but if it is going to help me to prevent another miscarriage, then I will do it. I will do it gladly. Hey guys, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching. I know it was a long video. I just wanted to go over my history so that you had some background to go off of so you know where we are now um, and how we got here. So I thank you. Thank you so much for watching. And I plan on uploading more updates for how things are going. And I would appreciate any prayers or good vibes that you could send me. And I will see you next time. Bye! Mm -hmm.